come back to us. Uh, come and have a glass of champagne, Eve. No, thank you. I have work in the fields to check with Monsieur Charles. Eve's a remarkable woman. She's been such a help. Yes, well, uh, all that has changed now. I'm here to do whatever is necessary. Eve has an instinct for the soil. You ought to get to know her. Yes, well, I, I mean no disrespect, Grandfather, but uh, I had a mother, I have a grandmother. I do not really need a stepmother. down here never changes. It's nature's affection for our champagne. And uh, how much cellar do we have? Two miles of cellars in this one panel. Five in all. I have something to show you. cellar is always full. Always. It's the strength of the house of Lancel. It's our treasure. But, um, what good does it do to hoard it? <laughs> we lost all our vines in the Phylloxera Plague of 1878. In the last 70 years, Champagne has been the battleground for three wars. The enemy's taken every bottle he could lay his hands on. So, since 1918, our family has kept back a percentage of the best wine every year. The last house will always be able to rebuild or replant or restore the vineyards by selling this champagne. No one has a key to this treasure except the male members of the family. I have one, your father, of course. And today, I give you yours. Thank you. Protect it with your life. I promise. <laughs> to the future. Eve? What is it, my dear? Jean-Luc, I have bad news. I heard on the radio that France has officially surrendered. Well... I predicted this would happen. So, we will survive here in Valmont, never fear.
was taken prisoner at Dunkirk. We are allowed only to write and say we are well and working. I will survive and come back to you. I love you, my dearest Amo. Heil Hitler, I am Captain Rottemann. On orders of the Führer and Herr Klebisch, administrator of Champagne, this domain is now under the authority of the Reich. It will be your duty to provide Champagne exclusively for the German armed forces. Who's in charge of the vineyard? I am. Your name? Yves de Lancel. What is your name? Uh, Bruno de Lancel. You will come with me. I want to survey your fields. You will show me. Yes. I will arrange an inventory of all stock tomorrow and meet with your foreman. That woman is your mother? No, that woman is my uh, stepmother. There is no reason to deal with her. I've just returned from the army. I was um, a tank commander in the 17th Regiment. The 17th, an assignment reserved for aristocrats. A very safe place to be. All practical men, no doubt, who have always found a secure place in history. Well, all who have always had generations of ordinary people to serve them. You're an arrogant French bastard. Captain, uh, you are a stranger here, a conqueror, yes. But we have had conquerors before. And the Champenois have always triumphed. Yes. Trust me. Trust you? It is always safer to execute a Frenchman than to trust him. Yes, I know. But uh, then I could never be of service to the Third Reich and never see you promoted to the high rank you so richly deserve. Shall be taking full responsibility in the running of the vineyards. You know nothing about running Valmont. Nothing at all. It is my blood right. I have no intention of taking orders from you. Where does all your hatred come from? The air you breathe, madame.
Madame. When the harvest comes, we should do well. These are the best graves in the world, except for the Rhineland. Then you should have stayed there. You Germans should have remained where you were wanted. If you French had any backbone, you would have given us a better fight. Where's your husband? In London, with the free French. Only certain important Frenchmen are in London. Very few French are free. And where are the important Germans, Captain Rutemann? Wherever we need it. The Vicomte is very charming and helpful. I expected he would be, Captain. Hi. Hello, Freddy. Had a good trip? Yeah, it was OK. Took Wellington up to Rumsey. Uh-huh. What's new? Oh, not much. Dodo came to Spitfire over at Biggin Hill yesterday. Captain Douglas nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> and some free French officers arrived this morning. A group sending them up to Scotland tomorrow. Can't think why. Oh, look, that's them over there. under the Gaulle, training free French forces. I'm flying up to Edinburgh tomorrow to take command of a tank regiment. <laughs> I missed you so much. I'm sorry that I left without talking to you, without saying goodbye. Father, you've got to talk to me. I don't know how to begin. Just say what you feel. Mother and Delphine, have you heard from them? They're both trapped in France. Neither one would leave when there was still time. Occasionally, I, I get word about them. Thanks for the resistance radio. They're both well. Good. Freddy. When I see you sitting there looking so, so vulnerable, I just wish I could make up for the past. You don't need to. We love each other. That's all there is to it. <laughs> You're so dear to me, Freddy. I wish I tried harder to understand you. And the solution was so simple. I just had to look at your mother and know that all would be well. <laughs> you make me so proud. to have you back, Delphine. Uh, there's nothing else to do, Nico. It's better to work than go mad. Mm. You heard from Armand? Yes. A postcard now and then to show our conquerors are civilized. General? 
This is our finest sound stage. Oh. Audio equipment. Who is that with Groven? General von Stern, among other things, is in charge of propaganda in Paris. Graven, look at her. Bring her to me, that one. I'd like to meet her. With due respect, General, I think you are wasting your time. She has refused all of my invitations, in spite of the fact that she works for me. came in from group. Apparently she bailed out and landed in the drink. A trawler saw her go in, but it was too late. By the time they got there, she disappeared. If only she wasn't flying over the water. If the weather hadn't been so bad, this would No if only. She made the decision to fly in spite of the fog. She went over the top and got lost. You're not supposed to go over the top, ever. It was character as much as weather, Freddy. Character? Then we all have our own particular flying character. She was at fault. Amy Johnson? Don't you dare say a word against her. It's not just Amy, is it? No, it's not just Amy. What you said about flying character, it, it just reminded me of someone. Jane, would you believe it if I said that I only had one lover? Someone that I loved very deeply. His name was Terence McGuire. Is that the reason that you're here? Yes. Oh, God. What is it? The song. When we were blue as kids, our, our mother used to sing it to us.
Bye. 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 Hello. Yay. <clears throat> Lovely to see you. This is Freddy. I am so glad you're here at last, my dear. I can't wait to judge for myself whether Jane has exaggerated her tales of your good influence. <laughs> Actually, Jane's been a good influence on me, Lady Longbridge. Oh, nonsense. We know our Jane. She's unredeemable. <laughs> but she's rather sweet from time to time. Now, get into the car before you turn to ice. No, I'm still in sibling shock. Who are all those children? My sister Elizabeth. Well, since the bombing in London, we keep them down here for safety. Now, I have rung you a bath. Me and this fireplace aren't going anywhere. No, 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 I mean a real bath. A hot pre-war bath, strictly illegal. More than the regulation three and a half inches, so I have to keep it secret. Well, you shouldn't have. But since you did, follow me. All right. Mr. Smith knew there was a hot bath around here somewhere. <laughs> right. First officer, Mary Frederick de Lancel, may I present my brother? Squadron leader, the Honorable Anthony Alistair Wilmot Longbridge. Freddy, Tony. Are you quite sure? Oh, quite sure. I think I remember him very well. Good evening, squadron leader. Good evening, first officer. Out of uniform, I see. On leave, sir. The circumstances of this birthday dunking will have to be investigated properly. At ease. Right now, everybody out of the bathroom. Let Freddy finish her bath in peace. It's her birthday, Grandma. Don't you think she wants company? <coughs> I'm going to interrogate her alone. You try my patience. All right, Mum. We'll Come along. carry on later. ATAs just can't keep out of the water, can you? Oh. <laughs> ah, happy birthday, Mademoiselle de Montsell. Please come and sit down. <laughs> My son tells me I missed the high spot of the day. <laughs> Indeed, of the year. You'll never get on my good side after such wretched treatment. Well, there isn't enough hot water to repeat the performance, Lord Longbridge. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you a toast. To Marie Frederic de Lancel. We welcome her here to this country. We welcome her here to our home. And on this, her 21st birthday, we wish her health, and happiness, and an early reunion with her own family. Yeah. Yeah. 
Marty Frederick. Here. To Freddie. To Freddie. Wait until morning? No, I don't think so. It's strictly a nighttime present. Oh, it's so warm. <laughs> it's my very own hot water bottle. Oh, I couldn't possibly deprive you of it. It's a must around here. We've been together through many cold and lonely nights. No. <clears throat> In that case. Well, Good night, Freddy. Uh, since you're not asleep... I can't sleep if you're here. Right, so it's only one question. I'm going to command a new squadron. A bunch of American chaps who come over to give us a hand. The Eagle Squadron, they're called, no less. I'm completely baffled as how to approach these blighters. They're real glamour boys. We just call them guys instead of blighters and chaps and glamour boys, and you'll do just fine. Good night, Tony. You sure? Yes. You've made me feel a lot more secure. Oh, Freddie. Darling, beautiful Freddie. We'd better try that again, I think. I may freeze to death out here, you know? What a frightful thought. Mother, have mercy. I'll keep you warm. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Are you sure you're a pilot? Quite positive. Oh. I'm surprised you haven't been shot down the way you're looking for a place to land. I think I've found it. Before we go any further, one question. Why? Will you marry me? That's your girl. Now I understand the mad rush. Smile, everybody, please. Thank you. Hold it. Thank you. <laughs> Could I have the family of the group, please? Thank you. <laughs> if you weren't such a reckless driver, I'd have married you myself. Congratulations. You. Yes, Mrs. Longbridge. 
Flight Lieutenant Jock Hampton at your service. Uh, at a safe distance, of course. <laughs> yeah, Tony's my squadron leader. Really? Yeah. He's always reminding us Yanks that we're too hot-headed. Does he know what kind of maniac he married? I fly unarmed, so don't worry. You fellows grab all the action while we just creep along in our little old delivery service. Well, you two seem to be hitting it off. Well, we see eye to eye on everything. Oh, come on, darling. We're off first. The others will follow. See you, Jock. Bye. Freddy Delancel, you beautiful, wonderful handful. You married the wrong guy. <laughs> the fortunate curator of a museum. Are you a collector, Vicomte? Well, it was my passion, my uh, reason for living. Before the war, I used to spend every vacation devoted to travel. Florence, Rome, London, Madrid. <laughs> well, those were the days, were they not, General? For me, the days are more interesting now. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Rutterman speaks highly of your cooperation. In what way can I be of service, Vicomte? Well, General von Stern, um, I came to see you because uh, Captain Rutterman's responsibilities have been transferred to your command, and because there are always opportunities for men who are on the alert for them, especially in wartime. Go on. Ruterman may be included with your blessing, but um, he steals more.